Let's have a listen to Lamar Jackson from yesterday. If you haven't already, uh, do you plan to have a conversation about the contract before the season begins? Oh, we actually did. We, we did. You know, it's a conversation. That's all. We're just keeping it private. Yeah. Is it you and Eric just doing the one-on-one talking? Uh, can you take us through any of that? Uh, we having a conversation. <laughs> so. Is it going to continue during the season? We have a conversation. <laughs> Are you play the rest of your career? I expect so. Yes, I do. If you don't have an extension, like the way you're thinking right now, I mean, will you um, be at training camp? Will you be playing week one under your current deal with no, with no contract? We're having a conversation about it. I don't know. That's Lamar Jackson with the revelation that a player who has in, refused to engage previously with the Ravens on talks on a second contract, leaving the team flabbergasted, creating an intended or unintended mystery. And really, yesterday's comments only bolster this, what in the world is really going on here? And when you listen to him and you watch him, I don't know if he was just saying what he had to say to get through the moment, and he wants to find a path that makes it less of a big deal, but he's refused to have a conversation. And I don't know that having a conversation means they're going to get a deal done, Shireen, but I am surprised that he acknowledged that they're having a conversation because the past stories we had heard are basically he's so focused on his career, he doesn't have time for that conversation. Well, and I'm curious how long he thinks it takes to get one of these deals done. If he's doing this deal himself, does he think they can just go and get this done in a week or two weeks? And maybe they can, maybe they just, just use Deshaun Watson's contract and go, here it is. Let's, let's give him this, whatever. But these deals generally take a lot of time, and is he going to spend now the next five weeks trying to get this contract done? This whole thing is just so weird to me, and I'm sure it's weird to the Ravens too, unless there's something there that we haven't heard about, and, and I don't think there is. I just think this whole thing's weird, Mike. I don't know where he thinks this is going, and until he signs this deal, as we've said on PFT all along, you don't know that he wants to remain in Baltimore. That, to me, still is a question until he signs a new deal. He has a contract for this year for $23 million base salary, and after that, you know, they're going to use a franchise tag on him, but it ultimately is that what he wants. And he keeps saying he wants to stay in Baltimore and keep saying it, but until he signs that deal, we don't know that for a fact, Mike. The three potential explanations, one, he – wants out of Baltimore Two, he wants a non-negotiable contract where he doesn't have to haggle that they demonstrate their feelings for him by making him clearly and obviously the highest paid player in football or number three he doesn't know what he wants those are the three possibilities and I have reason to believe that those are the accurate possibilities and the Ravens are as in the dark as the rest of us as to which of those three options Lamar Jackson prefers which of those three categories his mindset currently fits into and it is in his interest to get this done is it is in his interest to have those conversations that become negotiations that become a contract when he says we're having conversations and I don't know whether he's going to be at training camp or even at week one and I said last year he should not be sitting on the football field setting foot on the football field until he has his contract the Ravens are ready to give it to him. That's what makes this so bizarre and unprecedented. The Ravens are ready to pay him and have been ready to pay him. He just doesn't want it. He doesn't want to sit down and engage in those conversations that would result in it. But at least they're having a conversation. That still raises plenty of questions about where these conversations will lead. And the conversation yesterday with the media led to the point you made, Shireen, about Deshaun Watson's contract. That's the one right now where let's just sit down and give me the deal that the Browns gave to the guy that's got soon to be 26 lawsuits pending against him and all of this uncertainty. I'm the guy who's the MVP. I'm the guy who isn't causing you any issues whatsoever off the field. Make his the starting point, and we'll figure out the ending point from there. Here's Lamar Jackson talking about the potential relevance of the Deshaun Watson mega deal to him how much is the sean watson contract affected your thoughts about your future and what would be an acceptable contract for you um nothing at all you know i'm i'm a man of my own 
I don't worry about what those guys get. Now, see, that right there, that right there <clears throat> is proof positive. It's conclusive. It's mic drop for anyone who says this guy needs an agent. This guy desperately needs an agent because this is how it works, Lamar. This isn't, hey, I'm just my own guy. I'll take whatever they give me. No, no. Those who have come before you set the precedent. The idea is you take what they've gotten and you try to get more. That's how Kirk Cousins justified his role in the broader NFL business ecosystem several years ago when he was doing the franchise tag dance with Washington before forcing his way to the market and getting arguably more than he should have on the open market. But he did it. And what it did, it raises the bar. It helps the guys who are coming after Lamar Jackson. So he needs someone who will lead him through this economic minefield. How do you strike the right balance? How do you get the most out of the Ravens while leaving enough behind? What's our priority here? There's a lot of questions that a good agent will, will ask the client to help the client understand what he wants. It'll draw out from him thoughts and feelings that he hadn't possibly formulated on his own because he hasn't been working directly with someone who has the experience in doing these deals. I think he desperately needs an agent. I think it even more strongly than I did before hearing him say that. And he, I just think he just wanted to get through that press conference. He just wants to get through it. I, I don't know that his mindset has changed at all. I think he went there and said what he had to say to get through a potentially awkward discussion with the media. And Shireen, here's an idea that I have. I, I think, and I mentioned this in an article yesterday, if Lamar Jackson simply doesn't want to pay one, two, or three percent to an agent, and there are plenty of people in the NFL who think that's what this is all about, penny wise, pound foolish, the Ravens should just say, you know what we'll do? We'll gross up whatever the final offer is, whatever, we, whatever agreement we reach with your agent, we'll gross it up and we'll pay the fee. If that's the impediment to making it easier for everyone, that's what the Ravens should do. Yeah, it's a great point, Mike. And, and I'm going to say two things before I ask you this question. And one is, I think he should have an agent. And two is, I think this deal should have gotten done last summer, as Josh Allen's did, not this summer, if it get, even if it even gets done. Last year, a year ago, you said after the Josh Allen deal, which was a six-year, $258 million deal, $150 million in guarantees, $100 million fully guaranteed, you said if you're Lamar Jackson, you walk in there, you hand the contract to the Ravens, and you say, I want this deal. So has he, by waiting, has he actually come out ahead because of the Deshaun Watson contract, even if he doesn't know it? Now, I know he gambled immensely last year because of the way he plays quarterback and the fact that he missed five games last year. I understand that. But is he going to come out ahead just simply because he did wait? And if he waits again and doesn't have a career-ending injury, does he actually end up with more again? I know they both sides should get this done, and I know it's a huge gamble. But has he come out ahead from a year ago at this time? Well, yes, because he has carried the injury risk for another year and didn't suffer a career-ending injury or a career-limiting injury. He did miss five games last year, one because of a stomach ailment that pops up from time to time. And I've said this, and this is no joke. I've got Crohn's disease. I mean, at some point, give the guy a colonoscopy, frankly, and see what's going on. Because there may be some undiagnosed condition that causes him every few weeks to miss practice and ultimately miss a game for something that possibly could be easily treated and cause him to never miss any time whatsoever. But the ankle injury that he suffered and missed the balance of the season, that game against the Browns when he was outside the pocket. It was a clean hit outside the pocket. The protection against hits at or below the knees goes away. It wasn't anything that looked bad. It was just kind of a fluke thing, and he's done for the year. But he comes back and he plays and everything's fine, but you still continue to take that risk without the contract. So you keep playing at a high level. Yes, as the bar keeps going up and you don't have a contract, you benefit. The problem is, you continue to carry that risk. And when we're talking about yeah. ultra-generational wealth here, I don't know that kicking the can to get a little bit more next year is worth risking the contents of the can and a bunch of other cans, all the cans you have 
blow apart and it's gone if you suffer definitely a career-ending injury, but just the kind of thing where, and this is my concern for Lamar Jackson, this is the heart of the advice I would give him if he were my son, my cousin, my nephew, my client, my brother, my friend, anybody that I had any interest in helping, I would say there's a chance if you wait too long, all of a sudden you're not going to be Lamar Jackson anymore. You're not going to have any specific thing that keeps you from playing, But just the wear and tear, all of a sudden, you're not that guy anymore. And I think back to last week, the comments that were made by Channing Crowder directly to the face of Cam Newton on the Pivot podcast. And Channing Crowder said, Cam, you got old. You're 33. You're old. Well, you know what? For quarterbacks, 33 is not old anymore. But it is old when you spend 10 years getting banged around. Because you're running the ball more than you should. You're taking hits more than you should. At some point, the human body constructed of the same material as everyone else's, no matter how big you are, no matter how fast you are, no matter how strong you are, eventually the components of that body are going to rebel. So, um, Shireen, I agree. Last year, he should have gone in and said, just give me the Josh Allen deal. This year, he should go in and say, give me the Deshaun Watson deal. The problem is, and... I said this earlier in the week. One of the reasons why Steve Bishotti, the owner of the Ravens, was one of the people who spoke out about the Deshaun Watson contract and proved that they do indeed collude. Yeah, he doesn't want to give Lamar Jackson, a guy who may have the wheels come off at some point in the next five years, $230 million fully guaranteed. Well, yes. If I'm Lamar Jackson, I want that deal. If I'm the Ravens, I'm not sure I give him that deal. I mean, I pause a little bit. And you think about what they did with Joe Flacco coming off the, the Super Bowl. They gave him that huge deal and ended up regretting the deal that they gave Joe Flacco. So they've got to think long and hard about their future at the position. Do they do this? Do they just franchise tag him next year and say, look, we're going to roll the dice here. We're going to figure out what we're going to do at the quarterback position, but we're not going to give him fully guaranteed five years, $230 million. And at that point, I don't know what happens because if you're Lamar Jackson, like you said, Mike, you go in and you say, Hey, I'm better than Deshaun Watson. I have an MVP award. I don't have 26 civil cases hanging over my head. I am better than him. I want that deal right now. So this may not get done like Lamar hopes and thinks that it can get done. If he, if that's truly what he meant yesterday and, and thinks it can d- get done in a hurry, this may not because the Ravens may not want to give him the deal that the Browns gave to Deshaun Watson. I'm glad you mentioned Joe Flacco because I think the Ravens organization – to the extent that there are plenty of pieces still in place that were in place a decade ago when the Flacco deal was done. they you, you learn from that experience. And quick yeah. nutshell history lesson about the Joe Flacco deal. They tried to sign him in August of 2012. He rejected their best offer and decided to bet on himself. That was the first big bet on himself. That, that I can remember in the past 20 years. Joe Flacco bets on himself at the quarterback position, and then he wins the Super Bowl, becomes a Super Bowl MVP. And what happened after that, the Ravens had a dilemma. Franchise tag, obviously, if we can't do a long-term deal. Okay, well, what level of the franchise tag? And I mention that because that's coming now. What level? Non-exclusive or exclusive? Significant difference between the two. And then when you start going this year to the next year to the next year, 20% increase for year two of the franchise tag, 44% increase over year two in year three. Not that anybody's getting tagged a third time because it does go up 44% minimum over what you were making the prior year. But you're talking about two very different franchise tag levels for the Ravens and two very different realities. And the way this may end, frankly, Because I think at some point the Ravens get exasperated and they just trade Lamar Jackson. Well, the way it could end is they use the non-exclusive franchise tag on Lamar Jackson and say, if somebody wants to give us two first-round picks and they want to make him an offer that we won't match, 
fine. That's, that's going to be the only way we're ever going to get a contract with the guy. Let somebody else negotiate it with him, and then we decide whether or not we want to match it. That may be the end result. And what they did with Flacco, they did a contract right on the brink of the deadline for applying the franchise tag, so they never had to choose between exclusive and non-exclusive. And in hindsight, they probably wish they would have gone non-exclusive and let someone like the Chiefs or the Browns snatch him up for two first-round picks and move on because they ended up giving him a huge contract that was structured in a way that three years later they had to do it again. They had to do it again to get out of cap hell three years later, making the highest-paid player in the NFL three years later when he didn't deserve it at that time. So this time around, I think crystal ball, flawed and smoky as it may be, I think they're going to go non-exclusive franchise tag and wait and see the Dolphins or someone else shows up and makes him a big offer and w- willingly will give up two first round picks, Shereen. Yeah. And I don't know that anybody makes that offer, Mike, which you go back to, he should have done this deal a year ago. And, but if not, then now, now is the time for Deshaun Watson to get this deal done, to not bet on himself for another season after having that injury, ankle injury last year. He needs to go ahead and get this done and take his money while, his can, while he can and know that he's on a team that will build an offense around him where he has succeeded in the regular season. And then he has to figure out how to succeed in the postseason. So what if this team bombs this year? What if, what if it's not an injury? What if he just doesn't play very well and they don't win a playoff game and he's still sitting there at one and three in the postseason. And if you're the Ravens, you're wondering whether this guy can get you over the hump. Ultimately, can he get it done? Because he hadn't shown that, Mike. Three touchdowns, five interceptions in the postseason. He just hasn't been good enough in the postseason to get them where they need to be. So if I'm Lamar Jackson, I want to get this done. And and maybe it's not the Deshaun Watson deal. Whatever it is, I just think he should get this deal done, get signed, and be set for life and be set for his career with the Ravens. And, and that's off the plate. He doesn't have to hold out. He doesn't have to, to do interviews that he doesn't want to do, any of those things to talk about his contract. He has the money. He has a deal. He knows what his future is. I just think he needs to get it done. Well, I have believed that for a year. He needs a good agent to help him get it done. And yeah. maybe if the Ravens would offer to pay the agent fee, gross up the deal and pay the agent fee, that that could be the thing that finally breaks this logjam. If the belief in league circles, some league circles is true, that this is all about not having to write that check every year to an agent. And I think that's been the genesis of this movement that really hasn't gotten very far. Once guys realize they have to negotiate their own contracts, plenty of them say, I'm not interested. Yeah, I'd like to save the money that I'm paying for my fee, but I really don't want to do this because this isn't my area of expertise. I don't know how to go about getting the best possible deal. I don't know how to avoid getting screwed by one of these teams that negotiates contracts all the time, and I'm doing it once. Are you kidding me? Richard Sherman. Sorry, Richard. Got screwed by the 49ers the first time he did it himself. Russell Okung got beyond screwed by the Broncos when he did his deal with them. His deal with the Chargers was better. He had somebody help him. See, what the, the, the dirty little secret about this whole thing is the guys who decide to represent themselves have learned they need someone to help them who isn't really an NFL PA certified agent. So it's kind of, it's kind of not really in keeping with the rules, but they do have some people who help them. They just don't take a percentage and guys don't like paying that percentage because the money doesn't come out of their check. They got to write that check. They don't like writing that check. If the Ravens essentially say we're writing that check for you, Maybe that gets this done. Lamar Jackson said something else, too, because when Lamar was staying away from organized team activities, and Chris Sims and I talked about it, Chris had some fairly important comments along the lines of, hey, this guy wants to be Tom Brady. Tom Brady, early in his career, showed up for OTAs, tried to make himself better, was all in with the experience and practices and being around his teammates and elevating 
the folks who are going to help him try to get to the top of the mountain. There's the response that Lamar Jackson had on Twitter. Lamar wants to be Lamar, Chris. This part of OTAs is voluntary. My guy, I will be there, just not on your watch. It's probably other quarterbacks not attending voluntary OTAs either. But since it's Lamar, it's a huge deal. Find something else to talk about. We've talked about that. First of all, we discussed other quarterbacks who were or weren't at OTAs and whether they should or shouldn't be, whether it was Aaron Rodgers or Kyler Murray or any other quarterback that skipped. And secondly... Goes with the territory, Lamar, we are going to talk about you, especially post-draft when we're looking for things to talk about. And one of the things we talk about, Lamar Jackson, not at OTAs. Yesterday, he talked about his tweet directed at our colleague, Chris Sims. Here he is. You, you, responded, to, uh, you responded to Chris Sims recently on, on social media. And you know, there's people talking about you on these national shows, it seems like every day. Yeah. Is it hard to tune that out at all? I mean, like, how, how do you deal with that at this point? No, nah, sometimes it'd be clickbait. And then I had, he baited me, cause I'm like, dang, I want to be myself. I want to be the next guy. You know, I look at myself as Lamar Jackson, not Tom Brady and this and that. I want the Super Bowls like Tom Brady, but I'm still myself. So that's why I responded. It wasn't no hard feelings though. He doing his job. And that's good. That's good. You see, sometimes what you say on Twitter comes off maybe differently than what you mean it to. It's a very specific defined medium where you have up to 280 characters and you can't always detect sarcasm. You can't always read intent. And sometimes it's just reaction. He baited me. Well, he didn't. He wasn't baiting Lamar. He was just speaking his truth. He wasn't trying to get Lamar to react. And I know Lamar wants to be his own guy. But the point is, if you want to be great. Then there are certain things you need to emulate from other greats who have come before you. Tom Brady, all in for off-season workouts early in his career while he was still on the upward trajectory toward greatness. Now, maybe Lamar wants to show that he can be great without being all in, but at some point, the logic falls apart. Okay, Lamar, why don't you have a contract with the Ravens? Because I'm too focused on football. Well, if you're too focused on football, why aren't you at OTAs? Well, I'm, I'm working out with my yeah. quarterback's coach. Yeah, but you can do that another time. You got five weeks between OTAs and training camp that you can work on your mechanics. This is your opportunity to work with your teammates directly. You know, you don't have Hollywood Brown anymore. You may have heard. Oh, yeah, you tweeted about that. You weren't happy with it, even though you knew what was happening. You acted like you didn't know it was happening, maybe because you don't want people to think receivers don't want to play with you. It's not about you. It's about Greg Roman. That's what they're saying. Regardless, if you're all about football, it means showing up for football practice and then doing your Quarterback mechanics work at a different time if you're truly all about football. So there's there's some logical flaws in the way that Lamar Jackson is going about being himself. That That's the core issue here. Yeah. Well, and you didn't mention the clickbait, Mike. I don't think tweeting, there's nothing about clickbait when you tweet something. There's, there's nothing there to yeah. click on. I mean, well, and, 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 look, and, on and, and, and look, 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 let me just let me just say this. To anyone out there who wonders whether or not we engage in clickbait or whether or not you should or you shouldn't. First of all, we are providing information, analysis, and entertainment, and we want people to consume it. So it's all clickbait that we want people to click. We want people to read our stuff. The difference between using the term in the very literal sense and the derisive sense is certain things will have a headline that is completely and totally yeah. a failure to reflect what the story is, to unfairly bait you to click it. It's more of a mousetrap, right? It's, it's, you're, you're being duped into looking at something that when you look at it, you're going to say, well, I said I'm not going to say the S word today. Crap, that's not what I thought I was going to get. That, that's that's what clickbait really means. Yeah. Everything we do is aimed at baiting people to read and consume our stuff. Anyway, rant, rant over. Sorry to interrupt you, but back to our point. Yeah, Chris, Chris is just, yeah. he's not trying to mess with Lamar. He's just saying what he believes. Right. And he, and he said it, and Lamar obviously took offense with what he said, but... Fact is, he hadn't been in that building until this week in five months, Mike, and I'm not sure if you're one and three in your postseason career and haven't come close to winning a Super Bowl, that that should be what you're doing, and you lose, by the way, your best receiver goes gets traded in the offseason. So I think he should have been there at OTAs, at least part of them. I'm not sure that he needed to be at all of them, but at least part of them 
uh, just to work with those receivers and figure out what he needs to do, especially if he's not going to sign his contract. If you're not going to sign your contract, this is the most important year of your career. If, if you're not going to get that done, you've got to have a great year. You've got to be healthy. You've got to know your receivers. You've got to win games. You probably have to win that division to, to do what you want to do contract wise. This will be the most important year of his career. If he doesn't sign this off season, Mike. Yeah, especially if this all culminates in the non-exclusive franchise tag and he wants another team to throw two first-round picks at the opportunity to pluck Lamar Jackson away from the Baltimore Ravens. Look, he either did it on purpose or accidentally. He created a mystery, and the mystery has been fueled all offseason. And it's one thing to see the words on paper when you listen to him and watch him from yesterday. I don't know that the mystery has been solved. It won't be solved until he signs a contract yeah. with the Ravens or someone else. But he, he's either messing with the Ravens or he's got less self-awareness than Michael Scott. Either way, he's wandered into, whether he meant to or not, this strange posture with the team that is unprecedented because it's all about getting the team to want to open the wallet and pay you. They've wanted to open the wallet and pay him. The wallet's open. The vault's open. The, the truck is, is ready. It's on his porch. It's ready to dump the money out, and he hasn't wanted it. If he wants it, it should be fairly simple to figure it out. And it would be a lot easier if he had an agent to properly guide him through this process, right? How to handle the team, how to deal with the team. Should I show up for OTAs? Should I not show up for OTAs? When do we get a deal done? What's the update? What, how are we structuring the guarantees? There's so many different ways the agent can help. If it's a good agent, there are bad agents out there. But it, as I've said this before, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to put together a short list of the respected and accomplished and effective quarterback agents. Just look at some of the best quarterback contracts and find out who represents them. It's very easy to do if that's what Lamar wants to do. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.